Let me show you something about this phone that I actually really adore using or seeing on the daily. Now, whenever I try to unlock the phone, I have one of those dynamic wallpapers on, so every time I hit the power button, I get just dogs. I set it so that only dog wallpapers come up. I seriously just get cute pictures of dogs every time I try to get into my Galaxy S22 Ultra. Sometimes it's the little things that really make you stick around. Hey, it's Joshua Vergara. What's going on, everybody? Yes, this is my video about what worked and what didn't on the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra. Now, before we get started, uh, yes, I am trying something a little bit different with this video. I don't have like a script on a teleprompter that's going on the lens right now. I just brought out some notes and I'm trying a more extemporaneous delivery on here, a little bit more off the cuff. After all, you probably have seen a ton of content about this phone by now, but I still want to share some of my thoughts after using this uh, a lot over the last number of weeks. And that's because I do think it does a lot of things right, including redefining what ultra truly means in the Samsung world. After all, this phone is basically like Samsung saying, let's go big or go home. But even if they were going big, they did keep the phone mostly familiar. I mean, you're gonna get a big phone, which means you're gonna get a big screen. And on this particular phone, it is a wonderful display. Not only is it high resolution, it's also high refresh rate capable, wonderful colors, and is just a joy to look at for both work and play. It also has, like I just showed, that fingerprint reader down here, a nice and speedy one, which is definitely what you want when you're trying to get into the phone pretty quickly. As far as the design is concerned, even if this is a very large phone, you do get curves on the back as well, which kind of help with the handling. Uh, but the design aspect is mainly reminiscent of the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra, only this time all of the cameras are singularly embossed into the backing rather than having a large square that comprises all of this powerful camera setup. Say what you will about the size of the phone itself, it is quite the looker nonetheless. So yes, the phone is big, and part of the reason why the phone had to be bigger is because it has to accommodate a brand new addition to the Galaxy S lineup, a built-in S Pen. In making the phone even bigger to accommodate all of these various features, uh, well, it's going to make way for a trope that you might be familiar with in my Galaxy S or Galaxy Note videos. So as per usual with Samsung devices, it's gonna be a practice of knowing that there are some features which may not be ultimately useful, but it does come with everything and the kitchen sink, which means you do get some very useful additions. Like for example, up here, this is one of the first times that I've actually been able to enjoy Wi-Fi 6. And that Wi-Fi 6 is possible because finally in my office, I have updated my internet setup, and that includes a router from the sponsor of this video, Linksys. A portion of this video is sponsored by Linksys and their Hydro Pro 6 dual band mesh ready router. I actually finally upgraded my internet here in the office because I'm going to ramp up my live streams, but the increase to my uploads for YouTube videos alone has been substantial. To support that, Lynx has hooked me up with the Wi-Fi 6 enabled Hydro Pro 6. Wi-Fi 6 means more speed for more devices, and in my office there is no shortage of smartphones, computers, laptops, and other smart devices that need the bandwidth to work together. Especially when I have other people in the office, there needs to be enough to handle what everyone brings with them. Setting up the router is really easy because of the Linksys app, which guides you through the entire process and gives an easy to navigate interface for all of the different settings. Those settings include advanced security protocols, parental controls, and per-device monitoring for more control over what or who is accessing your network. You can even set up a guest network for people that you might have visiting your Wi-Fi network. With more speed for more streams, there is a ton that I plan on doing with my upgraded internet. And in the future, if I need to expand more, the Hydro Pro 6 has intelligent mesh, so I can easily add more points as my operation gets bigger. But for now, this one powerful Hydro Pro 6 router is more than enough for my solo operation. To learn more about the Linksys Hydro Pro 6 router, check out the links in the description below. Linksys have a lot of great Wi-Fi solutions that suit all kinds of internet needs, so go check them out. And thanks again to Linksys for sponsoring this video. So I have talked about the S Pen a fair amount already at the beginning of this video, but I do have to admit one thing real quick. I don't actually use the S Pen every single day. I have used it for a few contracts that needed some signing. Uh, it's always nice to have that capability. I have used the live messages to just send some fun little messages to ESA. Uh, and then I use the remote shutter capability when I do have the appropriate accessory to set up the phone, walk away from it, and then use the shutter so I can get that photo. 
And it's interesting because I'm not here telling you that the S Pen is really the killer app that makes this the must-have phone of the year, but it is a potent detail in the overall spec sheet of this smartphone. The fact that you can even have the S Pen there in those few moments once in a while where you might actually need it makes it a phone that's easier to reach for because it just literally has the most capabilities. The thing is, even though it's called Ultra, there might be some things here that even some of you users are still opining for that just don't make it too flagship smartphones. And that's because to some of you out there, the term ultra might actually be relative. Power users and users who need to have every single little thing inside of their smartphones just don't really get that level of choice anymore, even with the word ultra being used here. You don't get things like a micro SD card slot or there's no headphone jack on here, even though clearly there would be enough room to be able to have those two things. Of course, it's up to you whether or not the S Pen actually makes up for some of those omissions, uh, but I know some of you are usually in my comments telling me that you wish those features came back, so I am saying this for your guys' sake. But at this point in the flagship lineups, uh, we are pretty used to not seeing headphone jacks and expandable storage anyway, so it's another one of those things that we're hoping for, but it usually never comes. If there's one thing that I am actually a little bit miffed about, it's the box contents. I mean, for a phone that's supposed to be able to provide everything, Samsung doesn't bother to provide much more than the phone itself. With plenty of other phones sporting fast charging that is even way above the 45 watts that this one is capable of, it still kind of hurts that there's no fast charger in the box when um, it's something you could rely on if you forgot to charge the night before or you just need a quick top up before a long stretch. I don't think Samsung will do it anytime soon, but if they really want to hit ultra, maybe like 65 or even 100 watt charging, maybe one day we'll be able to get that on an ultra device. In general though, you really can't go wrong with a phone that tries to be as powerful as possible, has definitely Definitely the right spec sheet with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 in here and high amounts of RAM and storage. And you know what, it does need to have the most powerful spec sheet possible because there's so much to do in the One UI layer and then you have the other layer on top of it which is again the S Pen. Now I know that there were some controversies around uh, the potential throttling of performance that was happening on the Galaxy S22 Ultra and that uh, was due to the game optimization service but as far as I can tell um, th this has been addressed by Samsung in some software slash firmware updates. Uh, that being said, I have played a lot of games on here, especially games like Genshin Impact and Pokemon Unite, and I never really perceived any big problems when it came to the overall performance. That's not to say that stuff wasn't happening. It's just for me, uh, anecdotally, I was using the phone every single day for these various tasks and in games with max settings, and I didn't really see that much of a difference in performance, at least for what I needed at the time. But I will admit that the micromanaging of applications is something that happens in One UI. Uh, I mainly started to see this when I had to get a couple of applications installed and I wanted them to be left alone. But One UI is actually incredibly aggressive when it comes to its power uh, optimizations. Here under battery for sleep as Android, which is the app that was in question, it was always on optimized and most applications are usually at that setting by default. In order to make sure that this app wasn't being put to sleep or turned off in the background, I had to get in there myself and go to unrestricted. And it didn't end there. I had to head over to device care, go over to battery, head down to the battery settings and then have this toggled off because adaptive battery extends battery life based on phone usage. But that can be relative to whatever you are actually doing on the phone. And if there are a lot of background applications that you need to stay there, this could actually turn them off. All that micromanagement though, for many users, for the vast majority of users, is why they are able to get pretty good to better battery life out of Galaxy S devices. And the Ultra is no, uh, no exception. It's just that finally I had to contend with all of that stuff and I wanted to share that to tell you how Samsung definitely micromanages everything and its power management could sometimes become a headache, but very rarely for many of you. It's just what happened to me. All right, let's get to the cameras now. I did already do a camera test with the Galaxy S22 Ultra, and if you haven't seen that already, definitely check it out and you can let me know what you think of the camera quality in the comments there and down below on this video. But the main story that I wanted to highlight here with the Galaxy S22 Ultra is the fact that it has pretty much every shooting scenario covered. I mean, for example, you have back here the wide sensor, the ultra wide, and then two different telephoto sensors for various forms of, of zooming. And you have dedicated zooms once you get to certain thresholds. 
I may not zoom all the time when shooting with a smartphone, but it is nice to know that once you get to a certain point, it moves over to a sensor that can handle the quality there rather than just digitally zooming into what might just be two or three X. I even tweeted about this a little while ago where I went like well past the three or four X that I would usually max out at so I can get a picture of this squirrel from my kitchen. On top of that, you can still do like macro, photo, and video. That's because the ultra white can pull double duty. It's called focus enhancer and you can turn it off if it does come up when you're getting getting close to any one subject, but the capability is there and it's really cool that they have that on top of two zooms and then things like 4K video recording across the board. Especially in a landscape where we have flagship phones coming out where let's say the front facing camera can't do 4K or there's um, 4K missing on at least one of the sensors on the back or it just doesn't have a telephoto for example. It just means that this at ultra is definitely giving you as much as it possibly can. I was very much conflicted between choosing this or the Pixel 6 Pro for a recent trip. But for the sake of the certain piece of content I wanted to make while in that trip, I just decided to go for the Pixel 6 Pro. The choice was so hard though, and I think that is a testament to how well Samsung has been doing with solid quality across the board with the cameras on the S22 Ultra. Okay, let's finally talk about that trope that I was alluding to earlier. You've heard me say it on a lot of videos when it comes to Samsung phones before, Galaxy Syndrome. With a phone like this, you're getting a lot of capabilities and you're also paying for having all of those things. But inevitably, when it comes to a super premium smartphone, you have so many capabilities, so many apps, so many features that Quite a few of them are probably things you're never going to use on the daily. I mean, again, I do end up using certain things like just the cute dog wallpapers, but for every cute dog wallpaper that I'm actually happy for there to be, there's a swipe out menu that I never use. There's uh, Samsung's brand of payment system in Samsung Pay that I pretty much never use. Uh, there's also the S Pen, which has some features that I really enjoy, but many of the other ones I never use. Going into the app drawer, you go over to Samsung, and I definitely never use Bixby, and it's been a while since I've actually put on a Galaxy wearable device. Definitely don't use Samsung Health when I can just install Google Fit on here anyway. Samsung has done a pretty good job over the last couple of years to streamline One UI so that there's less bloatware, if you want to call it that. For example, one thing that they have done is uh, Google Feed. The Google Now Feed is now what you get to the left of the home screens. This is actually pretty nice, and I enjoy having this over anything that was there before, like the Bixby home screen. But there's still a bunch of redundancies. Like I just mentioned, um, I could have just Google Fit on there and uh, use that instead of Samsung Health. I would end up doing that because I have a lot of my data in Google Fit already, and trying to sync between the two is just an extra chore. Same thing goes for things like Google Photos. While the editor inside of the Samsung Gallery app might provide a couple of extra features, all of my photos are in Google Photos, so I gravitate to that anyway. For all the talk of Samsung and Google actually unifying experiences a little bit more, it's telling that the moment you turn on the Galaxy S22 Ultra and get yourself set up, there is still always going to be the Samsung folder for everything that they just are not willing to put away yet. As we continue to have a market of unsurprisingly great performing smartphones, whether it's in the general everyday aspect or even in the cameras for the most part, Samsung needs to find a way to actually differentiate their top of the line flagship, especially when they are differentiating themselves in other ways already with the foldable lineups. But for those of you who may not be trying to bend your phone in half, uh, there are still going to be offerings like this that are more classic, but need to be as good as possible. And that's exactly what Samsung was able to achieve by making ultra means something even more this year. And that's of course with the brand new addition in the S Pen. I know I go back and forth on whether or not a number of the features that are available here um, should actually be here uh, if all you're looking for is a really good everyday smartphone. But the fact of the matter remains that they are all still here. <laughs> it's not gonna go anywhere, you're gonna get it all. Uh, so it's for that reason that I do think it worked that Samsung has sort of emphasized, if not redefined, what Ultra truly means. But in redefining Ultra, they also had to take the note away. And that's when the level of choice starts to go down a little bit, and that's what I get worried about. So while it might be a good thing to have a consolidation of all of the most powerful features and capabilities in Samsung smartphones, it also means that you don't have much of a choice anymore. If you want a bar phone that does everything, you have to pay for one, and the S Pen is non-negotiable. 
to their credit, Samsung have made the Ultra device at least somewhat um, palatable as far as the price point is concerned. And that's compared to previous years where the Ultra device, whether it was the Note or the Galaxy S, was just somewhere astronomically high. But still, the trade-off of how much you pay versus how much you're actually going to use is just a consideration that I keep wanting to put out there. Because the foldables aren't usually given the same general specifications. They don't generally get the built-in S Pen. They don't generally get the best possible cameras. So if you are looking for a way to get the best package possible, you still have to play a little bit of that game of drawing the line between form factor and capability. Hopefully that changes in the near future. Who knows what the next Galaxy Z Flip or Fold are going to bring to the table. And if they do happen to have this camera array, then the thing I just said may be a moot point. But so far, historically, that hasn't been the case. So the Galaxy S line with its ultra variant is going to be where we're always going to see exactly how far Samsung is willing to go. Now, when the Ultra comes out again, I would really be interested to see just how much of it I would actually choose over Flip or Fold and vice versa. So I want to go ahead and ask that question of all of you. How much did the Ultra in Galaxy S22 Ultra actually sway you towards the most premium flagship currently available in Samsung's Galaxy S lineup? Did the S Pen actually make you want to go for this particular smartphone, or are you lamenting the fact that there's less choice now, now that the Note has been removed, and now, in order to get the Ultra, you have to get the S Pen? And of course, we have to wonder, or maybe hope, that some of these Ultra capabilities will actually make it to the Flip or Fold. Would you like to see that? Let me know in the comment sections down below all of your thoughts regarding the Galaxy S22 Ultra. One more quick thanks to my sponsor, Linksys, for sponsoring this video. From there, though, I'm going to go ahead and call it on this one. Thank you so much for watching. Please take care of yourselves and each other, and enjoy your tea, everybody.